The impeachment issue. What is really at issue in the House impeachment hearings is not something likely to ever be mentioned, but it will undoubtedly be decisive with regard to the outcome of the impeachment proceedings, with whether the House votes to impeach Donald Trump or the Senate moves for an impeachment trial, and whether Trump will win re-election in 2020. Trump could never have been elected in the first place, or rather duly selected by corporate and Republican manipulation of a broken election system and a corrupt electoral college in a handful of red states. If the majority of his base did not believe that anything Trump does, no matter how offensive, repellent, immoral, and even criminal, is perfectly legitimate and acceptable as long as his chief motive is to make money. Whatever individuals and groups may profess to the contrary, the belief that profit maximization trumps, no pun intended, all other social and humane values is endemic to America has been ever since the original Puritan aversion for mammon, the unbounded desire to accumulate vast wealth, began to erode at the end of the 17th century. By the end of the 18th century, it was accepted as gospel that making money was the preeminent way to achieve God's will on earth. The erosion process came to its end, its cataclysmic end, when the Civil War erupted and America decided that it preferred apocalyptic carnage and assassination instead of reviewing the wisdom of a lucrative chattel slavery industry. The ultimate result, of course, was the coronation of Donald Trump in 2016. Americans have invented many myths, stories, distractions, and lies to escape awareness the defining fact of our society. We pay lip service to ideas like democracy, freedom, and justice. We root for the underdog and praise the entrepreneurial genius who triumphs over seemingly insurmountable obstacles. But these are all lies that only the incredibly gullible, perfectly stupid, and hopelessly naive could find credible. What America believes in is winning, control, achieving absolute supremacy of and submission to orthodoxy. No matter how orthodoxy is defined, our exclusive reliance on the command and control model of communication that dominates our national policies, both foreign and domestic, our endorsement of psychological warfare, coercion, and torture, our preference for subversion, disinformation, counterinsurgency, industrial espionage, and assassination inconvertibly demonstrate our preference for tyranny, for enslaving the weak, for justice defined as the will of the stronger.